Greetings and salutations and welcome to a video about audio. Today we're going to talk about the Samico Rainier Phono Cartridge. The last video I posted about audio equipment, I said that I hadn't quite made up my mind about this cart. Well, since then, I've played a lot of records with it. I've had it now for about two or three months. I kind of know what it can and can't do. So I'm going to tell you about that in the video today. This is not a scientific review. I am not going to compare this cartridge with everything else in its price range on the market. I don't have a lot of benchmarks and stats and stuff like that. This is just my personal experience on my own equipment, which is a U-turn orbit turntable with the OA2 tone arm. I have also used this cartridge on a Project Carbon Debut Evo turntable and it actually performed better on the U-Turn Orbit turntable. As far as the amplifier I've been plugging it into, it's the built-in preamp in my Pioneer A10AE amplifier. That amplifier is really nice. It has a wonderful phono stage. It can take a lot of input without distortion. It's very low noise. I like it a lot. Your results may be different depending on your setup and your equipment. So just keep that in mind as you watch this video. So let's jump into talking about this cart. So we're looking at the Amazon.com product page for this particular cart. I have no affiliation with Amazon. Feel free to buy it wherever you want to. It's just that when I went to the Samico webpage to try and get information, I found that their web page is useless. That is one of the worst web pages that I have ever seen for an from from an audio company. There's very little information, difficult to navigate, just seems to be a whole lot of pictures. So anyway, at least we get a little bit of information here like starting out with the price, $149 now at Amazon. The prices of phono cartridges are all over the place right now simply because of supply line issues due to the pandemic. Supply and demand has driven up the prices on a lot of phono cartridges, like for instance, the Nagalka cartridges. They're Nagaoka, Nagalka, make sure I say that properly. I'm not really sure which way it is said properly, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, the prices have gone way up, and I guess that's because it's hard to get them over here from Japan. $149 seems to be about where the price of this cartridge has stood since it was introduced, and these things have been out for a year or two now. Sumiko itself has been around for quite some time, and they've made a line of phono cartridges, especially their moving coil cartridges that are very well respected. This is the Oyster series of cartridges, which is based on the older Oyster design, I'm assuming, because they used to sell a cartridge called the Oyster. And they're very well made physically. It, these are nice. I like the body of the cartridge. I like the fact that instead of having nuts and bolts, you just have some screws that go in the top, so you just clamp it in the head shell and you go on with life. That is a design which I like a whole lot instead of fiddling around with those tiny little nuts and losing them things and then you're in trouble. So that is a very big pro as far as the design of this cartridge. Also, the stylus itself is really easy to get in and out. It's easy to align the cartridge because you can see the tip of the stylus. The body of the cartridge doesn't hide it. The front of the cartridge is a straight line. So when you're sitting there looking down in the protractor, it makes it, it, makes it super easy. It's really cool that way. As you go up the line here, of course, the Rainier is the entry level, and I hate that term, but I'm using it anyway because it fits here. Uh, this is the lowest price cartridge, and as you go up, the prices go up exponentially in this series of cartridge. So $149 will get you a 5 millivolt output, and it will get you, you know, pretty standard electrical stats there. And as far as the stylus type or shape, they say that it's just an elliptical stylus. They don't give you any information like is it 0.4 by 0.7 or 0.3 by 0.7. No, none of that stuff. What they do is, is they just say it's an elliptical stylus. So I don't know what that is. Maybe somebody out there with a microscope could actually measure it. And we'll find out what's going on. 
tracking force is right at 2 grams, and they state a very narrow 1.8, 2.2 gram range. So they really want you to track this right at 2 grams. And I, well, we'll talk, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. <laughs> What I wanted to point out here especially was is that I'm assuming and I have read somewhere that these styli are interchangeable. I don't know whether that means the body bodies are the same electrically. I don't think they are because if you notice here as we go up you go from uh, 5 millivolts to 4 millivolts to 3 millivolts and then 2.5 when you get up to the amethyst which by the way that cartridge costs five hundred and ninety nine dollars that's the price that I found so that is a very expensive moving magnet phono cartridge right there way out of my league I'm not buying anything that expensive and it's not because I couldn't save up my pennies and do it it's just there's a point of principle here it's I think that's just too much for a phono cartridge sorry you can argue with me if you want to so uh, the next one up the chain is the Olympia. I really don't know what the difference is or how much better that would sound. I had read in a review somewhere that people who had started out with the Rainier were buying Moonstone Styli to upgrade it. And now we get some information here. It says that it's a uh, 0.3 by 0.7, and they say micrometer there. But when you say 0.3 and 0.7, that's actually mils which would be a thousandth of an inch. That's, those are different numbers. So I don't know who put these statistics together, but it, it's weird. Anyway, I went to go find a Moonstone stylus just to be able to tell you, and I found one at Music Direct, and they were selling it for $229. That's just for the replacement stylus if you would like to upgrade to the Moonstone, as somebody suggested. The Rainier stylus sells for anywhere between $70 and $90, wherever you're looking. Those were the prices that I found. And that is kind of steep for a low-end stylus, and I think this is a low-end stylus, and I think it hurts the performance of the cartridge. I really do. So let's dive into the performance real quick. The good side to this cartridge's sound is the fact that it has a very wide stereo image. It has very competent, tight bass. It is slightly warm on the high frequencies. They don't really jump out at you, but they are there. And it's very pleasant to listen to. And when you take all of that and you put it together, you think, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. The problem with this cartridge that I had is distortion. A great deal of distortion it does not track well at all and I mean you can hear distortion even on extremely clean records that are not over modulated or with a lot of wear this cartridge just has a distorted sound and when it comes to sibilance you know high frequencies like people saying the letter S and symbols this cartridge will really emphasize sibilance and it's not so much that it's mistracking as much as it just sort of sounds gritty on the high end. It, it's I can't really describe it beyond that. It you if once you notice it and you can hear it, then you start hearing it everywhere. And I also ran into a lot of inner groove distortion on this cartridge, and that's on two different turntables, very carefully aligned by myself, and it just didn't sound very well. It sounded to me like it needed more tracking force. So even though the recommended tracking force is right at 2, and they say 2.2 is the high end, I gave it a little bit more, eh, you know. And as far as I could tell, the tracking angle was pretty close to being right on. I mean, I don't go crazy about that kind of stuff. I mean, you can tell if a cartridge is way heads up or heads down as far as the VTA is concerned. This seemed to be right. It matched the tone arm. It was not a big major issue. Uh, so I don't think that this amount of distortion was coming from that. And I just think it really comes down to the quality of the styli. I have found this over the last several years that when you're dealing with cartridges that are down at the lower end, we're talking about from any company, Ortofon, Audio-Technica, to some extent, Nagoka, Nagalka, however you want to say that, 
they all suffer from having these bonded shank styli that just have too much mass on the tip and they don't track well. So let's dive into that just a little bit, okay? If you're an old hand at phonography, you probably might know a lot about this stuff, but some folks watching, this might be new to them, so I'm going to go through this real quick because it'll help me make my point. So the stylus, the actual part that touches the record and jiggles around in the groove to make the noise that you hear, can have several shapes and different kinds of construction. So over here on the left, this, by the way, is an old Audio-Technica graphic that's been bouncing around the web for about 20 years. Over here on the left, you'll see that we start out with a conical shape, and that's the simplest shape there is, and it's also the oldest. There's a lot of conical styli out there in the world, ladies and gentlemen. And in this case, that is a bonded stylus. That means that you have a little chip of diamond which is glued in some way to the shank, which is usually made out of metal or some other material, and then that's glued on the cantilever, and we'll get more into the construction in just a second. A conical stylus is shaped like a ball. That's why it's called conical. It kind of looks like a cone. Also, it's known as a spherical stylus. And they're easy to make, and they can be very easily polished. Uh, and that's why you find them on like low-end cartridges like the, the AT3600L, and you'll also find them on the AT91, and then even the uh, more advanced series of AT cartridges, they offer the conical option. And the advantage of conical is, is that it's very kind to records. It creates very little groove damage. They can track very well if they're set up properly, and they uh, are cheap. So if you're going through a lot of styli and playing a lot of records, you might want to just say, hey, I'll use a conical. And if it's on a good cartridge and it's set up well, it can be surprisingly accurate in its output. Next up would be an elliptical. Now, everybody wants an elliptical stylus to play high-fidelity stereo records. The idea behind the elliptical is, is that the stylus is shaped somewhat like an American football with the pointy ends pointing on either side of the groove. Now the idea here is that as that groove moves side to side, especially with high frequencies, uh, that will mean the stylus will slip through the groove easier, whereas you can get a pinching action with a conical stylus where if you have really tight high frequency modulation, uh, which will cause that stylus to move up in the groove, and that will create audible distortion. Whereas the elliptical, in, since it doesn't suffer from that, can theoretically be a lot cleaner and give you a lot more detail. And then in this particular chart, you see that we move on to something they call line contact. That's just sharper edges, and then they have microline. Like I said, this is an Audio-Technica graphic, so they're talking about their own stuff there. There are lots of names for advanced shape styluses. Uh, Microline, Vandenhall, Shibata. It's all pretty much the same concept. It's just that it has really sharp edges that track that groove really well, uh, but also that can accelerate record well wear, and those cartridges tend to have to be very carefully aligned, or you're not going to get the benefit from it. Plus, Taking a gemstone grade diamond and then very carefully cutting it to have that shape is something that requires man hours, and so therefore these things are extremely expensive. I personally never mess around with anything above a 0.3 by 0.7 elliptical. Number one is the cost. It's just a whole lot of money to lay out for a, a stylus. And the other thing is, is that I play a lot of old records and I play a lot of styrene 45s. And advanced stylus shapes are not good for styrene 45s. They will wear out those records quickly over time. So if you are a 45 collector and you have a lot of styrene, avoid those types of styli if you can. Here you can see the difference between a bonded shank and a nude diamond. So in the case of a bonded stylus, the part that you're looking at there is called the cantilever. That's the needle that you look at when you look at the 
cartridge itself. And then you'll have the shank, which is the part that actually connects the diamond tip to the cantilever. That could be made out of metal, and then they use like cement of some sort to stick that diamond on there. That's known as a bonded shank or a bonded stylus. And then over to the right, you'll see what's known as a nude stylus, which means that the diamond itself is cut in the shape and it has, it, in other words, there's no separate shank. It's just a diamond in that shape that's connected to the cantilever. The advantage to a nude stylus is the mass of the tip. That's the part that actually touches the record. If it's diamond, it's very light and very durable. And there's also less chance for errors when the stylus is constructed because when you're talking about the, the shank and then that stylus has to be bonded to it, manufacturing errors can come in there and like your elliptical stylus could be pointing the wrong direction and that has been known to happen whereas with a nude stylus that's usually something that they avoid especially since they are so much more expensive but moving all of that mass with the bonding material and the shank material uh, it causes the stylus to kind of rattle around in the groove a little bit and that's the distortion that you hear. It's actually leaving contact with the groove wall and slamming back in. And whenever you hear that, you are wearing your records. Distortion you can hear means that you are permanently damaging the record, especially if you hear a lot of distortion. So for a lot of reasons, both audio fidelity wise and long term record life, a nude stylus is better, it just happens to be more expensive. Here's a quick view of the uh, entire workings of a phono cartridge pointing out the cantilever, the diamond stylus, they don't get into bonded shank there, and they have the suspension and the magnet and all that stuff. So pretty cool. That's from the U-Turn's website, U-Turn Audio. Great company, by the way. I love U-Turn turntables. So getting back to talking about these cartridges here, I think what you have is a situation where on the lower end you're dealing with a bonded elliptical and the quality control isn't there and I would guess that the stylus tip mass is pretty high, which is the reason why I'm hearing that kind of distortion. And unfortunately, it's the kind of distortion that I would kind of expect to hear from like an Audio-Technica AT95E with the bonded stylus and that's a $40 cartridge this is $149 now if you want to upgrade your stylus I had read that you can use a Moonstone or an Olympia stylus on the Rainier and there's no issue I don't know if there's a big difference in the internal makeup of the cartridge or not however this gets expensive that Moonstone stylus on its own is $229. That's an awful lot of money to spend on a stylus. And then the uh, amethyst cartridge, the one on the end there, the cartridge itself is $699. And Lord knows what the replacement stylus is. I would imagine that that would be every bit of $500. And then they're offering a, a nude line contact stylus there. So I pretty much have to say about this cart that, you know, it depends on your ears and it depends on how much distortion you can tolerate I would guess for me I cannot stand sibilance it's something that I avoid and um, I find that a lot of modern lower-end cartridges that come with bonded styli suffer from sibilance and all kinds of tracking distortion because of the crappy stylus tip and the extra mass for instance the Ortofon 2M Red sounds like dog crap. It has high inner groove distortion, and it's a cartridge that basically just kind of sounds hashy, and it's because of that. Now, you take one of those cartridges and grab a 2M Blue Stylus and put on it, which is a nude 0.3 point by 0.7, and you put it on there, which now we're talking about a $200 stylus. All of that goes away. The stereo image gets really wide and all of that distortion just goes poof and this thing tracks beautifully. Although I have noticed that the 2M Blue has some internal distortion problems depending on the uh, 
uh, preamp you plug it into, but that's an entirely different story. So, yeah, um, if you were going to buy one of these cartridges and <laughs> if you really wanted one, I would say that you'd probably want to go for the Moonstone, which is about 300 bucks. Too much for me to pay for a phono cartridge. It used to be years ago that the way this worked was is that, you know, you'd pay a pretty decent price for a phono cartridge. Let's say that you bought one for 150 bucks, and we're talking 20, 30 years ago now, so that would have been a lot of money back then. But then when you went to go buy the styli, they weren't that bad. And I guess it was just because of supply and demand and volume and things like that. And you could get really good quality styli easily. These days, that seems to be an issue that this is the weak point in cartridges is the styli themselves i've pretty much made up my mind that from this point forward i'm going to avoid all bonded styli except for conical styli that i would have on low-end carts for you know just goofing around with because to my ears a bonded conical even on a low-end uh, audio technica with a carbon fiber stylus is a lot cleaner tracking than most of the low-end uh, bonded ellipticals out there. So the next video I plan on doing is we're going to talk about Audio-Technica cartridges and we're going to talk about their nude styli available for the uh, AT-VM95 series and the AT-VM530 series. Uh, because by the time I do the next video, I will have one specimen from both, which is the designation EN at the end for the elliptical nude stylus 0.3 by 0.7. Uh, the cartridge that I have on my other turntable, my Audio Technica turntable right now, is the 530 EN. I really need to do a review about that cartridge. I love that cartridge and I will tell you why. So that's what I'm planning on doing next. So if you like this video, hit subscribe. There's going to be more of these coming along, although they may be a little bit sporadic. And of course, here on this channel, I might be posting about computers or whatever. You never know what's going to pop up. So the final word on the Rainier. I think it's a good cartridge. I think it has a lot of potential. If the Sumiko folks can get the quality of this stylus up a little bit. I don't have a problem with paying anywhere up to around a hundred bucks for a new stylus. I mean, you're going to replace it probably once a year anyway, and you should, by the way, replace your styli once a year at the minimum. I, that's okay with me, but when you start getting styli that are up around two hundred dollars, that kind of gets, huh? As a matter of fact, with my Audio-Technica 530EN, the VM530EN, the replacement stylus on that's about $175. And that's a lot of money, just for a needle. We're not talking about the cartridge. That's If you break this thing, or if you wear it out, and you want to replace the stylus, that's what you're going to pay. But it seems to be the way the market is these days, and you can't really get these really good bonded styli anymore that are cheaper to make so it, it is what it is so anyway thank you for watching ladies and gentlemen we will do this again soon if you like what you saw hit the subscribe button see ya